Link 2012. Hello, everybody. I am just finished Divinity's End recently, and I am going to record my review of this map. It's going to be a little bit impromptu. I'm not going to be doing too much editing here. The first half, uh, or first like couple minutes, I'll just be explaining my review to you, other players, and then I'm kind of going to get into detail about my thoughts about each individual area in the map. So Divinity's End is a CTM map in the Pantheon series, a very well-known series. It's a collaboration of a whole bunch of different map makers, many of whom are very, very well known. Um, the map itself is quite long. It's about 30 to 40 hours of gameplay, and it's stinking fun. <laughs> There's no other way to put it. It was a very great experience all the way through. There were a couple of parts that were very difficult. However, the death mechanics in this map are not very punishing. So you don't have to worry about tippy-toeing around the entire time. If you die, it's no big deal. You can easily get back to your items and pick them up again without a problem. Unlike in a lot of maps, you don't have to worry about falling into the void. It'll teleport you back and you take a bit of damage. If you die in the void, then it takes you to an alternate dimension where once you complete a set of challenges, you can get your gear back as well. Can't lose your gear in lava, to explosions, or anything like that. So it's, it's very nice. It's very generous in that regard. One of the reasonings for this is because in this map, you're given a lot of interesting custom items with custom enchantments that operate very differently than your typical vanilla enchantments. Uh, this was done with a custom pack called Cartographer, primarily by Pear. It's an amazing resource pack, and if you're a map maker, I highly suggest you check it out. For players themselves, this is going to be a very experimental, I suppose, map where you get to play around with a lot of different builds, which works to the map's benefit and also can hinder it at certain places. At the end of the day, this map should be played by people that want a longer experience and especially people that want to play with a group. This map's gear is balanced around six players, and as a result, you can get quite a bit of it. Um, and you won't have to worry at all. So you can actually take a look here. Here's just like all the helmets that I got throughout the map. And obviously this isn't even counting like all the resources. This is just a little bit of resources that I had. Like I could have crafted plenty more. <laughs> um, enchanting and uh, anvils are pretty limited in this map. The combinations and repair are all custom. There's actually no combinations, it's only repair. And normally you're supposed to gather bookshelves here in order to actually enchant, although I believe I went and cheesed it a little bit so that way I could get level 30 enchants. But anyways, yep, great map if you're playing with a group and you don't mind playing for a long time and you're down to explore some new custom items. Now I would like to kind of go through each area individually, kind of how I experience them, some of my feedback on them, because in every CTM map, there's good areas, there's bad areas, there's areas that could use improvement, and there's areas that were done very well, and I'd love to see more of those mechanics. So kind of, we're going to go ahead and make our way to the very start of this map. There's going to be some central principles about this map that I want to go over as well. We'll kind of cover those here in the starting area, and we'll probably mention some of the other ones along the way. Uh, so the map starts off great. You're in this cool room. I don't even know how to get to it, but uh, you can see all the various contributors to the map. I kind of wish you could go back there, but very, very good opening to the map. Throughout this map, there's various cutscenes of the main villain called the Curator, and they're very, very well done. They don't kind of freeze you in place for the most part, so players that want to kind of just zip through everything can go ahead and zip through everything. All of the lore is hidden inside of chests and inside of item lores, so you don't have to worry about caring about it unless you actually want to dig into that stuff. And if you do, there's a ton of content here in order to kind of look through and just enjoy about the map. Uh, I loved the death system in this map. It wasn't punishing, and obviously, well, it was punishing, but it wasn't super punishing. 
It wasn't to the extent where, oh, I have to worry about dying every single second of the map. It gave me enough freedom to be willing to experiment with all these different builds, but also didn't restrict me to the extent where I was like, or it, it wasn't too free to the extent where I didn't care about dying whatsoever. Uh, because you do have to go get your gear, and that's a nuisance. So there is still punishment there in that regard. But it's kind of the, it's not quite the polar opposite of you know US8, <laughs> but it's it's quite different than US8. Um, the custom particles and atmosphere in the areas are great as always. I always love my custom atmospheres and areas. You know the different background sounds and the different particles and stuff like that. Custom items in this map are on point. Uh, I would say 10 out of 10 on the custom items. So cartographer being implemented in this map was fantastic. There's a couple of small issues here and there, a couple of bugs here and there. It's to be expected with kind of how much was accomplished in this map, but it's going to be fixed in later versions. So, all right. I think that's kind of some of the main points out of the way. So the starting area here was good. It was able... To notice the bonus item here pretty early on and uh grab that as well the bonus the first area is pretty handy which kind with kind of teaching you the basics about the map with teaching you okay enemies have abilities and okay i can fall into the void without completely dying this chest right here for instance was uh quite clever i kind of mined around it to make sure that it couldn't activate anything and it still activated something so <laughs> That's my own fault there. Um, there's no gravel or anything like that. The clouds here are great. I love like the little lightning bolts coming down from the clouds. It really adds to the feeling of the area. The mobs here are pretty well balanced. The blazes were a little bit more difficult, but that's fine. You have to have a couple more difficult mobs in the area. Uh, loot here was great. The Olympian fire was quite a quite a great find. Yeah, honestly, this first area was was very good to play through. I, I enjoyed it, and I was excited for the next area. The next area was intimidatingly big. I kind of wished that I had access to the monument at this point, because it's never fun to base somewhere without knowing, like, when am I going to be able to permanently settle down. And that was one of the difficulties right here. Um, however, it, it was, you know, I did set up like a little temporary base over here and it worked out just fine for me in the end. In this area, there's hoglins that spawn around here. They are, they were a bit too powerful because they split and then you had to kill the, their splits as well. And they were just really, really terrifyingly difficult. There's guardians all throughout the water. I think the guardians are a bit of a problem. I kind of understand why they're there. Because you don't want the player just kind of to retreat through the water and not have to face the mobs on the other side. But at the same time, they also discourage players from going through the water in the first place. And they're quite powerful. Um, so on that front, things were a little bit difficult there. The towers were good. Although I was kind of annoyed that there wasn't anything in these massive structures over here. I climbed these and I was like, where is, where is the... Th the purpose of climbing these. Why am I up here in the first place? It's good to have this tree here because players can obviously mine wood pretty early on. Inside the actual building itself, if we head down, we can kind of see the area as a whole. It's sort of a labyrinth down below that's also suspended above void for a large section of it. And this is very good. This is a very enjoyable section. Um, the one complaint I have is, and once again, uh, I, just to be clear, while I'm making complaints in this review, it's easier to remember the bad than remember the good. So while my enjoyment in this map did vastly outweigh the negatives, I'm complaining because it's easier to remember what to complain about. There's only like one or two areas in this map where I think that I think weren't great. And the rest of them are really, really good. Um, one of the cool things about this is there's also this like little shortcut that you can use to get back up if you need to, which is really, really, really neat and makes your life a lot more convenient. Let me see here. What was my one complaint? Yes, yeah, so there was a mimic that spawned. Mimics 
really, really cool concept. I absolutely love them. Um, but the, I guess I can kind of just explain the problem I had. The problem I had with Mimic is that for me, it ended up breaking through everything and fell into the void. Which is very annoying. Um, also, I didn't pick up on the fact that it took basically no damage from arrows, which was also kind of a problem. I'm trying to find the place where it fell through over here. Just, I can't remember where the Mimic spawned. So, I would have put the Mimic in a more confined place, and maybe telegraphed a little bit better that the player can't shoot them with arrows. But besides that, Mimic's quite a cool concept. Uh, and once you kind of fight one, you kind of know what to expect when another one's going to spawn. Mimics were bugged for me in this map. They pretty much all had issues, which is kind of annoying. But at the end of the day, they were still pretty fun. If you climb to the top of this tree, got a secret here on top. I was surprised at how little there was on the actual top of this tree, but it was still quite fun. I'm glad I didn't have to do too much when I camp here. So, yeah, good good top of the tree, good good tree itself, um, good below ground. The only issue here was really the mimic. Um, overall, very enjoyable area. I kind of like the atmosphere too of it like constantly raining. Moving on, we have the sort of transition between area two and the monument. This transition place I felt was a little bit long. Uh, it was decent overall. I kept trying to look up to see if there were any secrets and there weren't really any secrets up the waterfalls or anything like that. I wish there were a couple more secrets. One of the big complaints I have about Divinity's End in general is there weren't as many secrets as I like. I usually like there to be quite a few more secrets scattered about and there really aren't that many in this map. I hate to say it. Um, it's interesting because natural spawns are also disabled and only the spawners spawn mobs, which I think is a good mechanic. Um, so I guess, you know, just kind of two separate general things right there. I know each area was given to individual people, so some areas do have more secrets than others. However, I'm just saying like, as a whole, not enough secrets in this map. Not enough like little hidden Easter eggs and things like that. Uh, I did found, find quite a bit, especially with the help of some of the developers watching the stream. But So you get to the monument. It's actually a hostile monument. And there's resources out here to gather, which is great. So you get some coal and whatnot around the monument. I felt like coal was a little bit lacking early on in the map too. But it was fine later on in the map. Uh, at first, I didn't like the idea of there being a hostile monument. But I lit it up which was great, and actually having a couple of those spawners around was very beneficial because you could make a mob farm out of them, like I did right here. Now, I wasn't able to get any passive mob spawning, so I was kind of limited in the kind of farm I could make, but it was still a benefit. Uh, the teleporters here are good. It's good that you're able to have all these. I didn't feel like there was enough storage. As you saw, I expanded the storage twice. First, I changed the chest to be horizontal, instead so that doubled my storage capacity and then I moved chests I added more chests over here which uh, about doubled my capacity again so basically I more than 4x my capacity for storage because um, it's quite important in this map and there's a ton of offhands like this is great I'm really glad about the variety of offhands that were offered in this map I always felt like the offhand was the best option and I always felt at odds about which offhand to use. There's so many great options. There's so many great options for everything in this map, whether it be weapons, armor, or offhands. And you can combine all of them to make unique and very interesting builds. I like the whole collecting the lore. I believe there's even advancements for it. Oh no, there's not, never mind. Um, oh, I love this by the way. So Cardo was done fantastically by the way. Just kind of an overall note. So you can see right here, for instance, where all the different custom enchantments are, where all the different custom enemy abilities and attributes are. Uh, you can see what all the different custom effects in this this uh, data pack are. 
And it's really great how it just pops up in the chat and you can read about it. And then it also gives you the advancement so you can read about it later on at your own leisure. I think that was great. That's fantastic. After you finish uh, kind of exploring the monument, you head up this way. I'm trying to remember how I felt about this connection. We had the pit trap here. This section was also a bit long. Some of the connections in this map are pretty long. Come up here. Oh, this intersection was amazing. I think this might be my favorite intersection, to be honest with you. This was gorgeous. I was talking about it on stream. The amount of effort that went into this area is very apparent. I mean, just like, look at this. You've got all this, this really, really crazy cavern design with these beautiful trees and just these platforms all around and the platforms have, you know, ice dangling down beneath them. It's, it's very, 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 very well done. And you might think, okay, it's just an intersection, right? Well, who cares? Each intersection has gameplay in this map as well. And the gameplay in this intersection is quite long. You can basically come up these places on the side and then kind of work your way around these scaffolds on the outside and kind of repeat the process. Now this is great because it offers you some resources. I felt like the resources were lacking a little bit. There could have been more, but you know, it, it is what it is at the end of the day. If you made it over here, you could actually access the main gameplay portion of the intersection, which is basically this crypt. And I loved this crypt. It was, I love my crypts. They're fun because they're very linear and you're fighting like all these undead mobs and you're kind of like grave robbing. And it's just, I, I love my crypts. And this crypt was no different. This crypt was very good. Trying to see if there's any sections. I, I liked all these sections. This section was fun. It's definitely a breakup from everything else. Come down here. What is this? Yeah, all sorts of little Easter eggs here and there. Come over here, and then you have this final little section that leads over to the uh, bonus objective. And then, if you're sneaky about it, you can find the other bonus item right down here, which is quite handy. Looks like it could have gotten dropped on by a creeper there. It's pretty lucky not to. Yeah, so that was this item was very fun as well. This custom item was great. I enjoyed using it throughout the map. I think there should be more powerful items like that. <laughs> uh, even though it's a little bit situational, it's great. It was a fantastic weapon. Used it for quite a few areas. Okay, we have. I'm trying to remember which area is next. Babylon next, which is area four. Area four, yeah, this, this sandy area is next. I really like my sand areas, so I have like a bias towards this one. I really like this one. This is also the first area where I started using agility. And this area is like very, very well balanced around agility. If you have agility, there's all sorts of little tricks you can do to make your life easier. And it's just so much more enjoyable thanks to it. Um, I lit up some spawners here. I tried to light up a couple spawners of destroying them. Um, I started coming through this area. The towers are great. A good challenge. Uh, the spawners around are a decent challenge as well. Uh, there was a good amount of resources in this area, including, I believe it was coal and iron. No, it wasn't iron. I can't remember the other resource that was here. Bonus objective over here wasn't too hard to find, which is good. This castle was great. Oh, quartz. Quartz is the other resource you could get here. The teleporter is at a perfect spot. Because once you get to the teleporter, you're really kind of halfway through the area. You've got this upper section. Oh, I love this section down here and getting the eruption pickaxe and then experimenting with that. That was amazing. Um, there's the mimic over here, which I fought and took down pretty easily. And he dropped nothing. That guy was bugged for me. 
There were some other good crossbows in here to play around with. Oh, this was just such a fun area. There were... For a couple of reasons. The mobs felt pretty balanced. Um, there were a couple of them that were really powerful. But it was nothing that like stood out in my head as like, this is annoying gameplay. Uh, all of this was fun. The items were really good. So they felt like a significant upgrade and something that I wanted to experiment with. And the area just looks gorgeous too. It looks beautiful. It's a beautiful work. Very well designed. Um, the water in this section might be a little bit much, but it's fine at the end of the day. Come around here and you come up and then you end up having like this little section in here. This is a long area. <laughs> it's a lot longer than it felt in my head, which I think is a good thing um, because yeah, the, the time flew by that I was in here. I like this bookshelf maze because I felt obligated to, you know, look through it all, but I never felt as though, like, oh, I'm in this maze, it's taking forever, get me out of here. You have this little section here, and then you have the monument item right here. I felt like the, uh, what are they called, the support enemies that spawned up here couldn't quite reach the enemies down here, so they didn't have much of an effect at the end of the day. Not a major issue. Probably just a limitation of the data pack, but it's just kind of something I want to comment on. Well, this actually looks pretty cool, too, now that I'm looking at it. This isn't just stained glass. This is actually like a 3D pattern. I'm going to screenshot that, actually. I like that. I might use that for uh, my own design for fleecy boxes. <laughs> a lot of good ideas in this map. Moving on, we have... Area 5. Area 5 is another great area. I really, really like this one. This is Babylon. It looks a lot bigger than it actually is. And I quite enjoyed the gameplay in this area. You need to collect four essences from around the map, and that basically activates this temple right here. I liked going through the kind of waterfalls and exploring these side areas over here. I had fun with that. I liked exploring the sprawling city. That was fun. I enjoyed going into these massive temples and gathering essences from in here. That was good. Uh, I liked kind of coming in here and exploring the aqueducts and then coming down here in order to grab this wool. This wool was interesting because I kept falling down into the void over and over again. Oh, whoops. I gotta be careful, I don't wanna die. Uh, I kept falling into the void over and over again, but I kept getting teleported back up. So it wasn't super, you know, punishing for me. Um, this was a good section down here, I guess is what I'm getting at. I didn't have trouble with it. Um, what I thought was, the only section here that I thought was okay was this beneath ground section here. I don't think it was good, I thought it was just okay. So, there were some parts in here that looked that were cool though, such as all these different holes coming up and like this trap over here. Um, yeah, so th this section was okay. Oh, the rest of this was amazing. I love this. This is just such a cool city. And it reminds me of, you know, the hanging gardens. Good, good work. I'm trying to remember if that's area five. Oh no, that's actually area three. So I did. I apologize for doing it out of order. Now we get to area five, right over here. So, or is it area six? Five. Okay, so this is area five. Area five. One of the problems that I was discussing on stream is that some of the areas that are and experiences that are the most painful and gut-wrenching are also the most memorable. It's great to make an area that's fun and memorable, and if you can do that, then you've achieved on a whole other level. Um, Unfortunately, a couple sections of this map resort to the latter. 
where they're kind of difficult sections that you remember because they were annoying and terrible. I didn't have a super hard problem with this area. I didn't have a super hard problem. I didn't hate the berry bushes, even though I didn't like the foliage in general. But some of the mobs here, notably the phantoms, were awful. The gameplay here was confusing. I wasn't sure which way I was supposed to go, and I ended up exploring most of the section before finally figuring out where I was supposed to go. Which isn't the end of the world, necessarily. I was really confused about these uh, pantheons in here, or wherever you want to call these things, because they connected to each other, and I wasn't sure which way to go, and it was kind of a whole thing. Oh, I didn't even realize there was a secret chest down here as well. Oh, I got it. Oh, I got it. Okay, never mind, I, I didn't realize it. Never mind. The guardians here were obnoxious as well. Whenever I was trying to travel, especially to retrieve my gear, there were those guardians. Those were a pain in the butt. Those could have been toned down a little bit, I feel, and the area still would have had the same feel and just been less obnoxious. Um, Pegasus, really cool. From a aesthetic standpoint, this area is great. I like the kind of walls and the roof, the vines along them. The houses themselves aren't bad. Uh, they're actually kind of good because they give you the impression of a residence without actually requiring you to go inside, which makes life so much easier because you don't have to worry about the interiors of the house, you just worry about the gameplay on the exterior. Uh, I liked this section. This section was really fun. I liked this section. Okay, this was a good section. Tree up here was pretty nice too. I wonder if there was anything hidden on top of it that I missed. Now we're good. And teleporter here. The uh, bonus objective here I had a lot of trouble with for some reason. I don't know why, but I just couldn't find it. Um, probably that's partially my fault, but that was difficult for me. Um, let's see here. Yeah, the mobs in this area weren't that bad. The, the gameplay itself wasn't super fantastic. Um, would I play through this area again? I guess this is the question. I guess, okay, so here's here's the way to put this area. I wouldn't be excited to play through this area again, but I wouldn't be dreading it either. It's like if I knew that this area was coming in a CTM map, I wouldn't be like, oh, that's coming up. And I wouldn't be like, oh, it had this area coming up. It would just be kind of like, oh, we've got this as my next area. The main problem would just be like the phantoms and whatnot. This section was cool. I believe the parkour reward was lackluster. This bottom section was actually like really, really neat. And I heard some people had problems with it. Uh, the reason I think I didn't have too much of a problem with it was because I died on the t on one of these waterfalls. And then I kind of just watered down. And as a result, I didn't have to worry as much about things here. You know, kind of just abusing the structure of blocks because you can destroy them in survival. Yeah. I, thought, I think this looks awesome. Like, this just looks awesome. You know, obviously I didn't clear it out in its entirety, but it just looks awesome. I like that. I like that section. And it kind of just goes up and up and up. From here you go on to the next intersection. Alley-oop. Right over here. There is... Oh, wait, wait. Did I go the right way? Mm, yes. There's just more content over here. Yeah, this area like continues on for quite a ways after you finish up the uh the other section oh there was a trap over here that i never triggered it's kind of curious how do you how are you supposed to trigger that trap oh you must open this chest here okay cool anyways this pantheon was pretty cool these mines were great i'm trying to remember if i had any problems with them 
No, these mines were great. And then there was this pitfall here and this pitfall here. This was my favorite um, Easter egg in the map. I love this Easter egg. <laughs> okay, I'm losing my sanity at this point. Okay, oh, I love this. No, no, sorry. The other intersection is great. I think this one's my favorite, though. So the intersections are actually some of the best areas in this map for me. <laughs> the past intersection was great. This intersection is... Actually, I don't know. Maybe is this one better? Yeah, this one's better. I think this was one of my favorite areas in the map. I hate to say it because it's an intersection. But um, the trades were a bit lackluster. I never used them. But some of the items in here were fun. It was fun kind of lighting up and exploring this intersection. And one of the things about that I loved about this intersection is... You can kind of see the area down here is it didn't overstay its welcome. It was a short area in, you know, a massive map. And it stayed for just the amount of time that it needed to. It was great. I had a great experience playing this area. It was very fun. Might be because I had the Necro Blade and I was... Or, what did I? It might be because I used a concealed setup that worked really well, but... It wouldn't have worked if the mobs weren't well balanced. So, still, the creator did a great job. So this is... Oh, I hate to say that it's better than the other intersection, because they're both so good. I love them both, man. This one... Okay. This one maybe doesn't look as aesthetically... Okay. The other intersection looks absolutely extraordinary. This one looks extraordinary. And the gameplay in this is superior. Okay, I'll put it that way. But both intersections were fantastic. They're like A+. Plus. <laughs> okay, so next area. I'm trying to remember which areas we have here. Okay, yeah, we have... Um, this area is next. So this area was pretty good. I usually like sandy areas. The problem that I had with this area is that there's a pitfall up here. And I'm not sure if I missed out on the other side. So I had to kept coming, keep coming up in order to check it out. Um, and I just kept falling down. Now when you fall down here, you do unlock a shortcut back up pretty early on right over here. And I think that's good. I like all the shortcuts you unlock in this area because it makes it feel a lot more manageable at the end of the day. However, this section itself, I had trouble with. It's hard to put a finger on what in this section I had trouble with. I like the use of bedrock here, though. The aesthetics in this area were pretty good. Yeah, I had a little bit of difficulty with this, but it looked good. Then if you make your way up here, you have a fake monument. And you unlock this shortcut. One thing I did want to say was that the bonus item here was a little bit difficult to find. I think it would be a little bit unreasonable for most people to find it. But uh, it was creative because you just have that X marking the spot. Oh, that's another thing I wanted to mention earlier. In the Babylon area, that that bonus item is hidden a little bit too obscure. I had to have hints on that one. I had to have hints on a couple of these. Thankfully, people were here to help. Oh, okay. So, most of this area has been okay up until this point. But, this section in here was spot on. <laughs> First of all, it looks great. It looks epic. The gameplay is stellar. So it kind of hits all the avenues here. You've got two little rooms in here with bonus content. I feel like the room over here was a little bit too spammy. But at the same time, because of that, I ended up building a mob spawner here and getting level 30 enchants. So it was kind of a mixed bag at the end of the day. Oh, were there other things up here I missed? Oh, 
There was a trap I never triggered, it looks like. That's pretty interesting. That leads right over... Yeah, there's a lot of traps I didn't trigger. Actually, I think I triggered that one once. But anyway, so yeah, this was this section was a little bit spammy. This was fun. I was running low on resources when I got here, so... It didn't go perfectly, but I loved this section. I loved this area. So yeah, so this half... Epic. This half was amazing. Very, very well made. I came back here over and over again and over and do grinding. Because it was just a great section. I loved it. I loved it absolutely. Okay, so we've just completed that. We move on to the most notorious section of the map. This is the most notorious area in the map for a couple of reasons. Notably, it's huge and it's deadly. So there's a couple of things this area does very well, and there's a couple of things this area does very poorly. So the thing this area does very well is it looks good. It has a very interesting area layout. And my favorite part is that you get slow falling in water. So you can take advantage of that in order to maneuver in a more interesting way. This also gives hydraulic tridents in order to uh, in order to maneuver even in even more interesting ways. So all of those things about this area are great. Uh, there's also the fact that you can kind of enter the middle tower in various different ways, and th you have that tower mechanic. So it's similar gimmick to Babylon, which I loved Babylon. Um, the hidden objective was good that it was like just kind of out in the open here at the start, so you didn't have to worry about that. The trading here was also very good. So come to think of it, this area actually has a lot going for it. But it just has one or two very big problems going against it. The first problem going against it is that it's stinking hard. All the mobs here pretty much one hit kill you. And the mobs are also very beefy. So it's okay to have mobs that one hit that pretty much destroy you if you can destroy them pretty easily. And it's okay to have beefy mobs if they're just going to tickle you. But you put them together and you end up with a problem. The other issue is that there's like a variety of mobs. It's not just creepers. It's not just zombies. You have phantoms. Bees. Phantoms with creepers. Creepers that poison you. You have got cave spiders. You have got... Uh, Vindicators. So you've got vindicator. You've got uh, pillagers with crossbows. Uh, you've got invincible enemies that you have to knock into the void, which were a cool concept, but you know you just have to limit those. And you have other various boss mobs in here too. The problem with this is because there is such a wide variety of things that can kill you in this area, you can't create a build that effectively allows you to play this area you are going to be teetering on the edge the entire time, and you will die, just because of all the nonsense that gets thrown at you. And when you die in this area, that leads me to my second problem with this area, is that it's a pain in the butt to get back. Even with the help of the slow-falling waterfalls, you still have to trek all the way back. There needs to be a teleporter in a more accessible or telegraphed location here. I couldn't find the teleporter. I still haven't found the teleporter. And that's pretty disappointing. I think it might be in here. Yeah, the red and white house is what they told me. So this house right here. So that's not a great spot. It should really be like this house right here maybe. Um, or maybe even like this house up here. You know, something close to the start that you're going to explore earlier on. That way you can just kind of get back to the area. Um, so those three or two or three things kind of combine to make this area very painful to play. Like once again, it looks cool. It would play great if the mobs were toned down. By toned down, I mean like reduced the variation so that way you can create a build that can actually counter some of these things. Ugh. I think I probably will remember this area for quite a bit longer. Probably not as much as the other area that pair was in charge of, but 
yeah. Mixed bag here. It is an okay area. Has some very good things and it has some very bad things. Next area. Is, is it this one? Yes, this one. Oh, I love this area. <laughs> this one was very fun. So you jump down and you are kind of walking along this pathway. I think I really like linear areas that probably why well, I like this one so much. But then again, I like Babylon too, and that's not linear at all. Um, anyways, so this area was very fun. The hidden objective was a, a little bit tricky, a little bit questionable. Um, but we'll get into that in a little bit. I love the linear linearity of this area and how you just kind of make your way along. Um, the thing I liked most about this area was the black concrete, ironically, because you can only kind of see the section that you're on at the moment. And it it just adds a, a nice sense of like depth and exploration. Uh, I don't know how to describe it. The black concrete is great. It's terracotta, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the black concrete really adds to it, because you'll be, just be like walking along, and you'll kind of see stuff unravel as you move along. And like from specific angles, you'll see things, and you'll be like, oh, that's where I got to go. And you know, you'll come around and... Oh. So this what this area does very well is kind of limit visibility, and plays with visibility in a very, very, very good way. The mobs aren't overpowered in this area, they're actually very good. They're well balanced. They are not like super duper easy, but they're not super duper hard. They're good. They're well balanced. Good mobs. Uh, the castle section here was not quite as enjoyable as the rest, but still quite enjoyable at the end of the day. This whole area felt relieving after playing the previous area. The previous area it was kind of a chore, and then I got here, and this was a treat. <laughs> this was just a treat. Uh, I also loved the graveyard. I don't know where it is over here. Um, but the graveyard had a bunch of nice, funny Easter eggs in it, and I thought that was a cute touch as well. I liked the treasure compass, but I kind of do wish it pointed to something inside of the area. Um... Yeah, no, good, 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 good area. This is another great one. I don't know what my ranking for the areas in this map would be, but this would be up, up there at the top. And that's probably partially because it did come after such an anxiety-inducing area. But also, I do like the linearity of it, how it plays with vision, as well as the mob balance in this area is very good. I can't remember getting too many great items here, but that doesn't matter because it was just a good area. The Oh yeah, so the bonus objective over here. The problem that I had with this is that it's really not visible from anywhere. It should be visible from, you know, a couple of angles, like all along here. If it was visible along here, like if it was hidden right down here, like right where I'm standing right now, I think that'd be a lot more reasonable. But the way it is right now, the only way to get to it is to do a boat in the river and go look for it, which is a little bit janky. It's not a bad secret objective. I found it. Um, I just think it should, could have been a little bit more obvious. What a much bigger complaint would be would be on this section right here. You'll notice that to the intersection, you can literally just come like right over here, like do a little path right there. But instead, they decided to make it go all the way up. I didn't like that. I didn't like how long the connection was between the previous area and the intersection. It felt padded to me, if that makes sense. And it was very difficult to trek over and over and over again, um, which I had to do a couple of times. Yeah, it felt like the entire, like half of this section or the entirety of this castle section just kind of jam packed into a boring cave. Like, a castle's interesting, but this is just, like, a cave. And it's not necessarily, like, a bad-looking cave. This is a fine-looking cave. But it's just padded. You could have made a path that just went directly over here. Could have been a lot shorter. So that's kind of a complaint that I have with this. 
Otherwise, the uh, loot and secrets in this section were pretty good. I was kind of disappointed there was nothing up here, but that's fine. A lot of the gameplay in this area takes place over here at the Hive, which is an interesting area. It looks really good. I, I, I commented on this on stream, but it looks gorgeous. So when you come in here, you know, you have these little honey drips down, and then you have different patterns on the walls. You have, like, this honeycomb layout, like this one, and then you have, like, actual hexagon layout. And you just make your way up this. The ghasts were the main problem, um, so over time you'd kill those ghasts off. Is there anything to do right now? Um, the... Difficulty I have with the series this last part. So a couple of things about this. All right, once again, the most memorable areas are the ones that are caused the most suffering. I'm a completionist. I want to complete this map 100%. So when I made my way over here and came to break in to grab the monument item, gas continued to shoot at me. One of the gas shot through the glass and destroyed the bonus item immediately, which is terrible. And I lost it, and that made me very sad and we had to go spawn it in manually. There shouldn't be gas spawners all around here. It's sorry, sorry, there shouldn't be gas areas next to your bonus objective, period, in a map where losing items like that would be detrimental to the playthrough. Also, the death penalty for losing items in this map is relatively tame. Like, you don't lose items when you die in this map. So why should I lose an item? Because there was a ghast in the area while I was around this. You don't even need to, um, just, just so you're aware, you don't even need to mine in here. The gas can just shoot. If the gas shoots a fireball here, it's gone. The bonus item is gone. At the very least, there shouldn't have been a gas spawner right above here. And ideally, there really shouldn't have been any in here. Difficulty of this area is already fun without the ghasts. It's already quite enjoyable. Um, I thought that down here looked really cool, by the way. Like, down here with all the different layers of glass and uh, glowstone or whatever that is down there. So this section looked really cool down here. Really, really cool, especially when the creepers blew it up. That's a good attention to detail. Um, this room looks awesome fantastic. Just remove the gas bombers and it would have been perfect. Yeah, there's this cool stuff here. I liked that you didn't necessarily need the treasure compass to find this. You could have kind of deduced it from the fact that there's a giant stump with like a ring in the middle. Um, good, good, good. Next area. So we have two areas to explore next. I believe this is the next one right here. Oh boy, this review is getting a little bit long. I apologize. This is definitely a longer map. Oh, this section was really cool. So the mobs in this section were... I felt maybe like a tad more powerful than they should have been. But the gameplay here was, pretty, was really good. Uh, this area is very, very big and takes a long time to complete. I'm trying to remember what the main issue was here. There was some sort of issue with mob spawning. Yeah, so this first section here, the problem was that there were just too many spawners active around you. And so they kind of just kept spawning and spawning and spawning and spawning and spawning. You kind of want the spawners to be spawning where you're immediately around and not the sections that like, oh, I might explore there next, I might explore there next, I might explore there next. But if I'm sitting here, the spawners in all those sections are activating. I can't really choose one place to go to because I have to deal with all of them at once. Um, but other than that set starting section there, most of this was great. The curator animation here was cool. All the curator animations are very well done. Um, very fun area. I struggled quite a bit before I got soul speed, but once I finally got around to using soul speed, this area became uh, really, really enjoyable. I didn't fully explore this area because of how big it was, um, and I don't think I was enjoying it as much as some of the other areas in the map, but this still was really fun. And they had sections like down here with like the mimic and the, the loot chest, and the other section over here with the bonus item. 
uh, was also really fun. Um, I didn't do the entire pathway, but I did do the last bit of the pathway over there. I like how you can kind of explore at your own leisure in this map. I like how it centers around this massive, amazing tree. I like this bridge a lot. This bridge was really fun to go down. And a couple of these caves were good too. The inside of this tree was also great. Very fun. Oh, I don't think I ever got the uh, chest down here, actually. Ironically. That would have been a good chest. <laughs> so anyways, the tree is well done. Very well done. I'm not... I think the inside of this tree, gameplay-wise, was better than the tree in, in, in uh, Area 2. Both were good, but going up the tree in this one was a lot better. It's gorgeous. This area looks amazing. This area plays great. So, a lot of the areas in this map are absolutely fantastic. Um, there's not many that really stand out as bad. So I'd say that was probably like about the middle in terms of quality. Okay. Oh, this next section is cool too. So the next section's got this interesting gimmick where your water evaporates. And in order to get your water back, you have to activate two towers, which you don't find until later on, or two switches. The creeper explosions here are very overpowered. I'm glad they were toned down from the beta. Um, I think they're about right now. So long as you know in advance that the creepers are going to be powerful. It might have been a good idea. You know what? Okay. If I were to make a change here, it would be to make the creepers charged. And bring their explosion power down a bit. But make it, like, equal to where the charged creeper would do just as much damage as the uncharged creeper. That way players get the idea of, oh, I need to avoid this. This is going to make a massive explosion without actually, you know, kind of telling them directly. Just kind of scaring them into realizing that. Because otherwise, you see those creepers, you're like, oh, this isn't a big deal. And then you get absolutely wrecked. It's good that you get a couple of creepers at the start of this area, too, so you do realize that. I think it could have been done better, but it was still done very well because it was at the start of this area. A secret up here with a little bit of light. This was cool. Um, the mechanics of the mobs in this area were all pretty neat. Like the villager, the uh, pillagers would teleport behind you. I thought that was a cool ability. Um, let's see, over here, the blazes weren't too overwhelming. The gas didn't get overwhelming till later on. And I'll kind of explain that when we get to that point. There's a whole kind of ruined area over here which took me a while to explore, but very good. Very, very good. A pit down here that was good. I mean, this area is just good. It's, I'll say it's fantastic. It looks great. Um, it maybe maybe doesn't look the greatest for this map, but it plays very, very well. Um, and I kind of like how the respawner is kind of on top of all these pillars so you could go around and just take care of them all. And you had these little houses. It felt great. I think um, the problem was this castle here. So you see how there's all this fire in this section. That's from ghasts. And there's too many gas spawners here, and the gas explosion power is too big. So if you get hit, like, in the head with a gas fireball, you will die. Like, there's no saving you at that point. You're just dead. Which is difficult, because you have to be shooting down all these gas, and they're spawning faster than you can take care of them. And you kind of just want to blitz through this section, because there's not a lot on the outside of the castle. So I felt like the gas were bad. I think... Maybe the way it should have been would to be like a couple gas spawners out in the open, like two right here. Or just a couple up here. And that would have been better. It would still give you the gas, but they wouldn't be the end of the world. Or amp down the explosion power quite a bit. Like one of those two options right there. Just have a couple of them up here, or amp down the explosion power on the wall, all the ones that do exist here. They even destroyed the sign over here, so I wasn't even sure what I was supposed to do in this section, which was annoying. 
Um, but no, overall, really, really great. I liked the section inside of here. Getting to this chest was a little bit tricky, uh, but as it should be, because it was a good item. This castle, I didn't feel comfortable kind of sitting around, but that was less so there wasn't a really good loot incentive. So I did clear it out for the most part, though. So I kind of came up here, got the wall. This castle looks good. This castle looks really good. It's not as good as the uh, some of the previous castles we looked at, but this is like still better than I could ever do. <laughs> this is really cool, actually. Now I'm looking at it, you have like lava magma kind of pouring into the middle. That kind of looks pretty neat. Anyways, that is this area. Once again, a very good area. And then we move on to here. Intersection four, I believe. Intersection three or intersection four. Intersection four, which is very, very short, but it's got some good trades over here. I like kind of the effect of falling down this tower and getting teleported into the void. Uh, you do have a small section over here where you can try out your the, the hoe you get in this intersection, which is fun. And then you move on to Render's area. Render's always got good areas. Uh, so it's kind of an expectation at this point that he's just going to blow it out of the water. Um, this area has a very interesting gimmick where there's a bunch of fake blocks and you have to chug this potion in order to make those blocks get revealed. And that's very, very fun. Um, I think that was well implemented in this place. You had to constantly drink potions to find all the secrets. There were a plethora of secret rooms. Uh, maybe not with Easter eggs, uh, but good items. And there were plenty of traps as well that you had to drink that potion to realize. So I thought that gimmick was great. The area was very large. Got this whole spiral here at the top. I had trouble with gas again here, man. Like, gas are just the main problem that I have with the areas in this map. <laughs> it's kind of ironic. Uh... But other than the ghasts, uh, this area is A+. Plus. This area is great. And then of course you've got all the, like, places, since this is kind of linear and you just kind of, well, it's, yeah, it's linear, and you come all the way up, you can just place water in order to make a shortcut up, which is also pretty good. But even that is still, like, a long ways up. It's very, very tall. So... Good job, Render. Great area. There's some good items in here, too. It's definitely worth trying to take a look around. I think there was even one, like, on the pillars on the outskirts over here that I found useful. Yeah, like, one of these pillars. And I was like, man, I'm glad I explored these pillars, because they had some good items. Um, the bonus item here was a little bit hard to find, but that's because I had looked into every corner... But then I had forgotten to look into the, the couple corners, and it happened to be in one of those corners that I had forgotten to check. So that's, you know, kind of my own fault for that secret. For this secret gave me a little bit of trouble. I spent quite a while trying to find it, and couldn't find it. I was chugging the potion a lot, too, because I thought it would be, like, somewhere in a hidden section, and not kind of out in the open. Um, so the outside of this area looks like S, S+. Plus. <laughs> The inside of it looks amazing as well. Um, and then the gameplay is obviously top tier in there. There's, there were, I got a couple lag spikes in that area initially, though, which was kind of annoying, but besides that, it's good. Uh, this area here, fabulous. I liked uh, using the trident around this. It took a lot of getting used to at first. This area, you kind of get overloaded with diamonds, so you never need diamonds, like, ever again. <laughs> Which is kind of fun, and also kind of, like, I don't know about that at the same time. Um, but that's just kind of the way it is with diamonds, because when you get a fortune pickaxe, you just get way too many diamonds. And it's really hard to kind of limit that. Um, but yeah, no, there's loot, there's great loot on, like, all of these islands, and there's incentive to explore, because you have the trading villagers. Who a lot of them have really cool trades. Uh, and I got some good use out of that. 
exploring the islands was fun. I didn't do it in its entirety because I was trying to kind of move along with the map. However, I did explore the primary objective. So in order to get the wool, you need to activate four beacons. One of them is a freebie. Um, and each of them have their like own little section here. This section was really, really, really fun because it's kind of a classic CTM section and there's a lot of references in here and it's just good gameplay. This one was very fun. I wasn't sure that, I, I didn't realize I had to push the button on this crystal in order to activate it. And I didn't realize I needed to activate the crystals at all. So that gave me some trouble. But once somebody pointed that out to me on the stream, I didn't have any problems. This sword was awesome. I love this. The issue with it was the silverfish spawn eggs. Or, okay, the issue that I think I was going to have with it was the silverfish spawn eggs. However, whenever I got the silverfish to spawn, you know, you could kill them and it was just fine. It turned out to be a non-issue at the end of the day, I guess is what I'm saying. Um, some interesting items in this sword as well. But overall, the sword was well designed. It's kind of an interesting concept. The lava pours out, so you don't want to break the walls. Um, you've got, like, the top of the sword with all the blaze spawners. That makes it difficult for you to kind of access. I wonder if there's anything up here. Probably not. Okay. So, another great section. Uh, the last section, which... I didn't feel like this section was as good as the previous two. Now, the reasoning, or sorry, the first one, the reasoning for that was because it's not long enough. <laughs> Otherwise, this area was really, really, really fun. This is honestly a really, really good concept to have all these gravel patches in these gears. And once you update them by placing torches or getting a fireball to hit them, they fall down. I love that. That's so cool. And they fall down onto the lava below so you know you can still it's just a pain to get back up but you don't die necessarily so this area's concept is the best but unfortunately it's not big enough like i'd like to see a full area or half of an area using a similar concept to this one um and i know that some you know some of you might have seen my review of US8 and you, you might be thinking, well, why did you hate the gravel fall section in US8, but you liked this one? I think the reasoning behind that is that in US8, when you fall, it's game over. Whereas when you fall in this, it's just like, oh, well, that's a bummer. I'm going to just try to be more cautious next time. So it causes you to be more cautious, but it's still pretty fun. It's definitely fun, like kind of parkouring around Gravel patches floating by a pool of lava. It makes you feel epic, even, in, you know, you know the consequences aren't going to be that bad. So, anyways, maybe I'm rambling a bit too much. Really, really good section. Um, it's too short. Too short. Too stinking short. <laughs> and I realized later on this was an hourglass, which is, like, really, really cool. It's, like, a massive hourglass with all the different time around it. It's just amazing. I love this. This is very, very, very neat. Yeah, so the center section was great. I like how the curator was going around like, let me on, you can't stay away from me forever. And you get that. Um, it wasn't super odd. So when you place that music disc in, you unlock area 13. It wasn't super obvious to me that there was a star area 13 or where the area 13, or it was obvious to me that there was an area 13. It wasn't obvious to me where area 13 was, however. Um, so that's a thing. I felt, I, I don't know if it could have been made more obvious though. Like when you teleport over here, you do see the particles over here. So you kind of know to come this way. And then once it starts unlocking the path, then you know. So this area basically is an homage to the previous areas in this map, as well as Titan's Revolt. And I love that. I think that's amazing. Even though I haven't played Titan's Revolt you can still get a sense of respect for this area. And the amount of effort that went into making this whole section in this area is whew, overwhelming. Uh, by the way, this, this transition section is like also sticking awesome. I loved it. Uh, besides the fact that it winds a little bit too far, so you do kind of have to make a path over. But at the same time, I'm glad it winds around instead of you having to walk the whole path each time. So that's good. It gives it a little bit of variety too, going up and down and sideways. Yeah. So this middle section is like 
absolutely phenomenal. It's so cool, man. So as you're going through this section, you're kind of seeing the different map makers that worked on Titan's Revolt, as well as kind of mini representations of their area, which is really neat. Um, like all these sections were good. I'm trying to think if there's any like particularly strong feelings I had about any of the sections. I felt like this was a little bit too much uh, blaze spam and oh uh, this section right here. Yeah, there was too much fire spam in this section right here. Um, otherwise, that area was good. Yeah, most of these are great or excellent areas again. Oh, the heartbeat that you hear here. And then that you kind of come over here to destroy the heart. Oh, that's just the coolest concept ever. That's really, really good. Really, really good. I love that. And like the whole behemoth outside of here, that was great. This section was annoying because of the ghasts. Like once again, it's always the ghasts that cause me issues. They destroyed the tree and then they destroyed kind of everything and it wasn't really possible for me to get after them. At least it didn't feel that way. So there's that. So anyways, love the references in here. The heart thing, love that. And then you come up and fight a, a Wither, which I thought was also a really great concept. The Wither AI is a little bit janky, so the fight was kind of a little bit weird. The Wither just kind of dug into this corner, and I just kept shooting him. But it was cool to have like that little mini boss fight right there. It was enjoyable. And then you get the option to choose between a bunch of items out here, which is also pretty fun. All right. Up until this point, it's been great. We have another little section over here, which I felt was a little bit drawn out, but it's not the end of the world. It's not a little section that comes all the way down here. This path is really crumbly, which made it difficult to walk down. I think it would have been better to have this path like fully repaired. I don't see the reason why it has to be crumbly. Um, like maybe put stained glass in between to make it seem as if it's falling apart, but it's really solid. That way you just don't give your players anxiety about it. Because that's the problem here, is that I need to go super slow to make sure I'm not falling. You can just put stained glass, get the same visual effect. Unless you're trying to make it difficult for me to go down steps, but in that case, like, why are you making it difficult for me to go down the steps? I don't see the point in that. Either way, so maybe, maybe the steps are, are not great, but the rest of the area is awesome. My favorite part was definitely this final boss fight. This was kind of the coolest take on a final boss that I've seen. Because it's not just your regular old boss fight. You're having to rush around to destroy spawners. So you kind of have to create a set of gear that allows you to do that. Which, you know, is great in and of itself. And then it's a throwback to all the previous areas. It is a little bit long, which I don't feel is the end of the world. Because you feel... Okay, like this boss fight was done so well that when I finished it, I felt euphoria. Like you just have that, you don't, if any of you have played Undertale and you beat Sans, it's like that sort of feeling when you beat this final boss. <laughs> it's really stinking difficult. And when you finally get through everything, you're just like, oh. Oh. <sighs> yes. It's just the most amazing feeling ever. Very good, very good. I don't feel like any... I, yeah, I felt like there were a couple areas that were pretty hard and some of them that were easy. Um, but overall, I kind of all added up together to make a, a really challenging boss fight. Um, and that was amazing. Because you really just... It's like a 15-minute segment that you just have to get through. Oh, it's so good. This boss fight is my favorite asp. I think this is the favorite, bo my favorite boss fight that I've ever encountered in a map. Um, I don't think it's quite. I'm not sure if it's gonna be the most memorable boss fight I've ever had. Probably the most memorable boss fight I've ever had is at the end of Harold Prince Mansion when you fight uh, the Wither there. Um, that'd be the most memorable boss fight that I've ever had in my whole Minecraft. I hope that the curator becomes number one or number two on that list because it is it is an epic boss fight. Like truly epic. Worthy of the phrase. So okay. Anyways, enough praise about the boss fight. It's it's great, okay? Whoever made it, fantastic job. Yo, that's like worthy of its own map, to be completely frank with you. 
like the level of awesomeness of this boss fight. And it's so cool that it's like an homage to all the previous areas. So we've sung a lot of praises about Divinity's End, and it deserves a lot of those praises. Everybody poured their heart and souls that worked in this project. It's very, very apparent just from the people that came by the stream by how giant and magnificent all these areas are, how much thought went into designing all the mobs, and then also beta testing and, you know, changing things that needed to be changed at the end of the day. While sure, there's still a couple of frustrating elements in the map at the end of the day, it's really, really great overall. And I like the whole concept of, you know, mixing and matching gear, which, like, once again, it, it can be a detraction sometimes because, you know, you... Okay, I don't think I really covered this, but when you're trying to try out different sets of gear, you don't have enough time because you get to the next section and then your set of gear is already outdated. So you really can only use the gear you get in the previous section for the next section or that current section. And then there's certain builds that are just going to be like completely terrible. And there's some builds that are just going to be completely overpowered. And so it kind of, you know, makes the experience odd in that regard as well. Um, but the whole concept was, you know, explored well, almost as well as you can in a CTM map, I'd say. Cartographer was brilliant. Like, honestly, huge compliments to that. The areas are wonderful. Cartographer is great. The mobs are, well, extraordinary, but there were a couple of areas with balancing issues here and there. But, uh, yeah, I love this map. This was such a good experience. Thanks, everybody who worked on this map. You guys are legends. I can't say it enough. <laughs> I hope that you do more projects in the future. Let me know. I'd love to be a part of them. Until next time, guys, don't forget to contribute, and as always, make the most of your day.